on the menu today. So I would use this at school every day. And funny story, sitting next to me would be a certain Kate Beckinsale. And Was now, she a good coder? Welcome. Hello, Chip Dippers. Hello. Welcome to Perifractix Retro. Um, and Lady Fractic. Welcome to And Lady Fractix Retro Recipes. Can they see us? <gasps> yeah. Do you have your uh, so sonic screwdriver thing? Okay, why don't you just use that? Perfect, well done. Uh, how do you like Doctor Who? Oh, yeah, good point. Well, this is the first box that the Sonic Screwdriver has revealed to us. And by the way, if you're wondering why I've got the Christmas demo running, that's of course the Commodore Christmas demo. Of course. Originally designed for the SX64. It's because every time that we do this, I really feel like it's Christmas, even when it's not. We're very lucky, aren't we? We are, truly. But we're going to share everything with you, so that's why we're doing this. And of course, everything that we unbox here, I'm going to try to use in future episodes to keep sharing the love. That retro love, the best kind, right? I think it's the only kind, right? Not what I was hoping you'd say. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Uh, Excuse me, what did you chomp, <laughs> chomping in my ear. Excuse me. Oh. Ah, right, so this is the guy that also gave us a bunch of magazines. Yes. But thank you so much for those. Here's another shot of those as we're unloading them in the driveway. And I've been enjoying reading through these. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, so we've got a bunch of user guides, manuals. 68020, that's an accelerated version of the processor that's in the Commodore Amiga. Made by Motorola. Motorola, do you remember them? They're still around. They are still around. Um, Palm Connects. The two different disc sizes, depending on what you have at home. Which one do you have? Oh, the big Whatever one. size floppy you prefer. To each his own. Or her own. Yeah, this is a IC, which is, stands for... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, she sees it. It's a vest pocket handbook, so you can literally put it in your vest pocket. I forgot my vest. Ooh. <laughs> A Timex Sinclair 1000. Wow. Oh, wow. I've never seen one of these in real life. This is real life, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah, Christ yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Christmas. It must be. But yeah, the ZX81 was the first Sinclair machine. So this was very, very early, like 1981-ish. You want to see it? She says, this smells lovely. Her face. She's got the eyebrows and everything. She has got eyebrows. Soft clips. Do you have soft clips? No, mine are all made of metal. Oh, your hair clips. Yeah. yeah. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Not mine. Not mine. Oh, I stuck my tongue, my tongue out. <laughs> uh, that's a thesaurus. I, I can spell it, but I can't say it. So this is basically a clip art library. That's great. So nowadays you would Google Google Images. Mm -hmm. um, back in 1980, 90. <laughs> 1980, 90. Oh, yeah. it was a good year. You used to have to use soft clips stored as IFF brushes so they can be read by popular painting programs. If brushes. Yeah, international, inter interchangeable file format. Obviously. It's the Amiga graphics <laughs> format, among others. So many goodies in here. We won't go through all of these today, but I'm gonna be up late at night, every night, lying in bed next to you, reading my Amiga ROM kernel. And I'll be asleep. I'm reading them out loud though. You're not gonna be listening? Oh, great. <laughs> um, do we know who this is from? Thank you so much to Richard Erhalt. I'll insert the name later. <laughs> Very good. Richard E, thank you so much. How did you know? Because I'm psychic. Well, like my sidekick. <laughs> I'll give you a sidekick. Okay, I take it back. I'll cut that out in editing. Thank you, Richard. Oh, it's still heavy. So why don't we try some smaller things now? Yes, I okay. do. So I bought this wonderful confidential stamp, but the problem is it never dries. So every time I touch these packages, I get ink on my fingers. Oh. So you'll always know where I've been in the house, darling. Ah, a demo. I wonder if that's the, the Christmas demo that I just mentioned for the SX64. Thank you very much to 
<laughs> I scrubbed out the name. Confidential. <laughs> uh, to David Green, David J. Green. Cheers, David. This is from... A small British package. It is British. Uh, this is from Mr. J. Parker. Let's be nosy Parkers. Pardon? Let's be nosy Parkers and see what's in there. You never heard that phrase? Does it look like I've heard of it? Nosy Parker? No. No. <laughs> what do you think it means? A nosy person? Yeah, you nosy Parker. No. <laughs> wonder why it's Parker. Uh, let us know in the comments. All day long, this is what our life is like. Yeah, yeah. Can you take this cock waddle? Just making up words now to get to confuse that. Uh, but we have got here Amstrad PCW printer ribbons to go with the Amstrad PCW printer that we got in the last unboxing. That's excellent. Excellent. How old is this, would you say? 1985, yeah, about that. Another small package. Mm, good things come in small packages. That's what I keep telling myself. This is from, this is from Russell Mills. Oh, does he know yeah. Russell Brand? Not related, no. It doesn't work that way in England. Oh. We have got... Dun, 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 dun. This is a program that I have heard about so much since I did the chess videos. So Archon, um, it's kind of like chess, but as you can see, it's all, almost like a battlefield. Cool. It doesn't play by chess rules, but... Then I would be really good at it. <laughs> probably would. He says, watching your channel's book back great memories from childhood. Uh, I was totally chuffed. We're doing... <laughs> I think we're doing uh, Lady Factic tests here. Underlined when I found my copy of Archon. Do you know what chuffed means? I was very pleased. Yeah, she knows that one. To be I, honest... Just, just so you know, there is an English to American translation at the bottom for viewers like myself. That... Isn't that a bit, a bit better? To be honest, I thought posting it would be a doddle. A pain. <laughs> Easy. Oh. <laughs> but it turned into a real dog's dinner. A pain. Yeah. But, but dog's dinner is like a bit of a mess. Honestly, every every time she has the same meal, every day and night and lunchtime, she gives it 10 out of 10. Oh, that's lovely, she said. When he got to the post office, there's a long queue. Just before I popped my clocks, my turn came. Lost my mind? I think it means die. Yeah, die. It's <laughs> aggressive. Uh, the postman waffled on. Talked. Yeah, about not accepting the parcel, which had put a spanner in the works. Put a wrench in the gears. That, is that what you say in America? Yeah. Oh, so they have the same one, but they just change spanner to wrench. The manager agreed their reasons for not accepting the parcel was pants. Was BS. <laughs> Bloody silly, BS. And finally, Bob's your uncle. There you go. There you go. She's good. She's learning. The package was on its way and I was full of beans. Happy? Yeah, full of beans. <laughs> High spirits. Gotcha. After such a simple task, I must admit I was cream crackered. Exhausted. Cockney rhyming slang. Oh, uh, knackered. <laughs> Very good. She's good. Russell, I thought I'd be unboxing retro gear and instead we've got a full translation manual for Lady Factory. Thank you so much. Oh, and Archon, of course. And it's time for this to pop its clogs. <laughs> May it rest in peace. Pieces. Next, on the menu at Retro Recipes. Do not bend, please. This is quite funny, actually. Uh, if you do feel the need for some bending, this area is for you. Enjoy. I appreciate that so, so much. Should we bend it? Just get it all out of your system. That's better now. Sexy bling. Greets to all fractics. Oh, that's us. Yeah, that's for you, this one. Actually, we do have something for her. Stay tuned. We'll do that next. <laughs> I'm still none the wiser. Oh. All right. <gasps> oh, a th no, it's a 3M logo badge. Oh. So if we've got any 3M products, we can stick this on. And then it's got a logo. Oh. Ooh. Oh. That's nice. I wonder if... That's the original. And that goes there. That's pretty snazzy, huh? I love it. So you may have been noticing that Puppy Factory's been a bit uh, restless. Antsy. She's not an ant, she's a dog. Uh, but we have got a package here from BarkBox. Now, this is actually something we've subscribed to for about two years. So we get these monthly dog deliveries for the doggos. 
Tempting her over with last month's treat. Come here. Pepsi. Good. Sit. Wait. Pa. Good. Oh, very, very enthusiastic. Or pulling. <laughs> okay, you ready? It's in here. Okay, so we have a tradition every month, whenever these arrive, that we all sit down on the floor and then I open it and we read through the... Okay, so this month it's an autumn tale and then when you open it up there's nothing like a drive through the woods with your head out the window and your ears flapping on a crisp fall day so hop in the station wagon and rake in the fun with an autumn tale Hail. make your best bud unbelievably happy this fits right in with us oh okay so we get two toys plus Two oh. bags of treats, Whoa. plus a stick of some kind. Whoa. And the toy is, this is the deer hunter. All right, you hang on to that. And then the second one is uh, Mutt Bunch Hard Cider. <laughs> Mutt Bunch. <laughs> I, Careful how you say that. That's what it says. <laughs> Mutt Bunch. All right, take a sip. Oh, we have to do it this way. <laughs> Get it, get it, yeah, oh, whack it. Very strong. All right, let's make a cheese. I mean, between us. Okay, make one. Get it. Choose a toy. Choose a toy. <laughs> She's very diplomatic, trying to remain impartial. Oh yeah. Ready for a chick stick? How's this for self-control? Leave it, hey. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Okay. Soft nibbles. What a good girl. It's very close to my face. Thank you. Wait, ASMR. Anyway, thank you BarkBox for sending us this, even though we paid for it. <laughs> is this what you pick? Do you know what this is? Oh, yeah. She picked it. It's a PCB, Puppy Fractix cartoon beer. Or Puppy Fractix cuddly beer. Of course, this isn't brewed by PCB Way. Did you know I was going to hit you in the head? <laughs> um, PCB Way are absolutely terrible at brewing beer. But if you want some high quality PCBs for your computer, then we recommend PCB Way. <laughs> Put the sound effects in later, because as we all know, PCB stands for Perry Fra Puppy Fractix Cuddly Beer. He will chew on this later. I will. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, we've got five big heavy hitting packages. Let's go. <laughs> This is a box. Box version 30. Who knew the box had come so far? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. It is a ZX Spectrum Plus. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Could just be a box. Who's this from, by the way? Uh, S. Hudson or Shudson. I got an email about this and I mentioned that this is the one that is closest to the ZX Spectrum Next design. You can see how they modeled the new one after this design. Mm -hmm. um, of course, these were designed by the same guy, which is still incredible. Unfortunately, he passed away um, just before the Kickstarter delivered, but um, great to see the origins, see kind of where the color logo ideas came from. So I've always wanted one of these because my friend Matty Fractic had one as a kid. And this, this is the thing we used to play Attic Attack on. So I must just open it. It is Christmas after all. There it is. See, I appreciate little details like this. They didn't have to press it into the styrofoam. But they did. But they did. Wow. Okay. There's our letter from mm. Shudson. I had a 48K back in the day. Then this appeared on my TV and oh my gosh, OMG. 
I wanted one. I managed to save up every penny. Several days later, I discovered it was the exact same as the 48K, except this had quirky keys and a reset button. Quirky keys or quirky keys? Quirky. <laughs> he was gutted, sad face. Now it's time to send it on to a good home. Unfortunately, and I couldn't find a good home, so. <laughs> Added to the 3D printed figure I made for my display and added a game to keep you busy. Oh, that is. So that looks like Jetpack and <laughs> Henhouse Henry. Hello, I'm Henhouse Henry. Hello, I'm Jetpack. Remember, it's PAL and from the UK. Don't blow it up like the Team 17 one. <laughs> from Stu. Lesson learned. Very nice. Stu <laughs> Hudson, so now we know the name as yes. well. And Dan Dan. Did you have Dan Dare as a character? No. Yeah. Maybe? I'm not old enough. I don't know. I dare you to play this. I'm not right now. She's too quick. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stu. All right, next up, uh, a medium sized one. Um, can't, see, can't see what I'm doing. I'll put those on him. Beautiful. Thank you. Dizzy. What is this? Bang. A disco drive? A disco drive? A disc a disc drive. This looks like a BBC Model B disc drive. How is it? Oh yeah. I haven't touched one of these since I was probably eleven at primary school. Watford Electronics, 250 the High Street, Watford. Probably not in business anymore. Well, maybe they are. Thank That's you cool. so much. That is from James Langridge, uh, one of our supporters. James, thank you so much. Not sure what I'm going to do with it, but as always, I'll find something to do. Get this over there. Thank you, James. Okay, next up, this uh, is from... Thomas Forever Jr. A metaphor, perhaps, for how we here, in living in the 80s, are forever juniors. Mm -hmm. Too much? Yeah. <laughs> Let's open it up. Um, it does say this is a very underrated system. What could it be? <laughs> you got some polystyrene in your hair. <laughs> Look at that. A VIX-20 all, ah. all my own. So do you know where this came in the lineup? Do you remember from any of those perifractic retro recipe videos? Um, before or after Commodore 64? Before. Yeah, so this was in between the Vic, uh, in between the Commodore PET and the Commodore 64. Thank you so much for that, Thomas. Um, I was just speaking to the 9-bit guy. He said he was amazed that I don't own a Vic-20 because I never had one growing up, so it wasn't perhaps as nostalgic to me personally, but now I do. And I believe it's still got the... Plastic? The plastic <gasps> wrap on there. Can I peel it? Them are. Just kidding. <laughs> Never touched since the Commodore factory. I love that badge though. Do they all have that style badge? Kind of that gold? gold? I do not know. <laughs> and this is the floppy disk drive. Weigh that. Oh! That is not light. It's heavier than the computer by far. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sweating. Yeah. I can't go on. You go on without me. Okay. <laughs> I'm taking this with me. I mean, this is his workout for the day. So. For the month? I mean, for the day. Sorry. <clears throat> Why am I apologizing? You're a camera. A Vic. 1541. Interestingly, so I don't own a 1541 disk drive. I have the um, Accelerator Plus Plus floppy disk drive, which was compatible with this. But um, this is essentially the same as the Commodore 64 1541 drive. Mm. But of course, we made some mini versions yeah. of recently. But they just renamed it from Vic 1541 to regular 1541 and changed the color when they brought out the C64. But it's, it's compatible. So Uh, 
as I was saying before my life flashed before my eyes, um, I now have a drive I can actually use, a real one for the C64. Wow, so that's uh, definitely a job for a refurb. And unfortunately, it looks like the, the handle, the knob, what do you call it, um, got damaged in transit. Thank you, Thomas. Despite that incredible packaging, um, the USPS or someone still managed to yeah, cock up the floppy. Oh. <laughs> this looks like a monitor. monitor. <laughs> what is this? Looks like a sandwich. Da -da. Do you recognize this? Uh, it is a cassette player for a Commodore. Why is there a counter on it? Well, the only real reason is if you saved games, you could theoretically make a marker of where each game was saved that you'd written. <laughs> she trying mm -hmm. to she trying to tell you something? I think she has a treat caught in her teeth. You have some treat caught in your teeth? Did you get it? All good? Okay. I was stealing the show. Next sandwich is Need help? While they do that. <laughs> this is exciting. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's red goo on it. That's melted plastic. Oh. Or is it red goo? I don't know. Okay. We may never find out. This is the same same device, but for the Commodore Plus 4, so it has a different plug. I probably haven't seen one of these. <laughs> Can you stop doing that? Thank you. Stop it. I haven't seen one of these since. Stop it. Oh, there's... Oh. So I was right, it is goo. Yes, darling, you're always right. Why is that? It look, no, it looks like it's... Smell it. Melted. I have no current uh, explanation for what that is. Maybe it is current. I was thinking that. Um, I was going to say, I probably haven't seen one of these since... I saw a plus four on demo in probably Dixon's or Boots back in the 80s because this is the very unique plus four color. Did they stop making it because it leaked goo? Apparently. Which means... Is that a plus four? It is. All right. Now you'll have seen I did a very fun video about all about the plus four and how it compared to the Commodore 64 and others. But I would probably, I don't know if you'd agree, along with the Amiga, this is probably the sexiest styled computer mm. for those fins on the back. I think it's futuristic and DeLorean-like and, you know, sexy in its own way. What is your favorite of all the, because you know all these machines now pretty well. What's your favorite? Uh, the Atari 400. That's a good choice. It kind of looks like a UFO. Mm -hmm. But wait, there's more. It's also featured in the video I did about the Plus 4. We talked about this, Commodore 16. Ooh. Again, never owned one of these. Wow. It's a joystick. Oh, it's two joysticks? Yeah, I've had these on my wish list on my website for, well, since I made the website, because the Plus 4 joystick uses a different port, doesn't use the Atari 9 pin. Uh, so now I can actually play games properly on the Plus 4 in videos. These are probably the most like sleek joysticks that I've seen, which kind of matches the, the Commodore. Yeah, I'll be playing with my joystick a lot later. So the Commodore 16 was kind of a bad idea of Commodore's. It was essentially a plus four with 16 kilobytes of memory. As opposed to? So the plus four had 64 kilobytes like the C64, although they were not compatible. But then Commodore released this Commodore 16. Which had 16. Which means all the people who might have written 64 kilobyte games for this series, the Plus 4 and the 16, couldn't use the 64K because you couldn't use, play those games or buy them for the 16. So they kind of crippled their own idea. I always love this multicolored logo here. The gradient, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So thank you so much for that donation. That's interesting as well because it's different ports to the C64. So why would they go completely different and change all the ports? It kind of reminds me of like what Apple does. Yeah, it was, the idea was to create a, a business line 
essentially. So no games, but two joystick ports. <laughs> well, that is true, but it wasn't primarily. Obviously, they hoped that it would capture the gaming market too, but mm. Plus 4, it had four packages on it. That's why it's called the Plus 4. Oh. Spreadsheet, word processor, database, file manager, and something else. Um, that was four, but you get the idea. <laughs> and you could hot launch them straight from boot. Oh, cool. So that was the plan, but it didn't work out very well for well. Commodore. But that's okay, because they came out with the Amiga afterwards. They did. Your girlfriend. My girlfriend. Thank you so much, David Kunz, for that very, very generous donation. Ah, over here. Cool. We've got one more. Yep. <laughs> the gifts keep on coming. This is from James Langridge. We already had one from James Langridge. Yeah, he gave us the BBC floppy disk drive. Why do we have a BBC? Is this a BBC Model B? I don't know. Please find enclosed your nearly new BBC microcomputer system. Oh, this is from James. He wrote this. It's from 1985. I'm trying to work out. Does James work for the BBC or is he... Is he just using a fancy letterhead? If he is, I appreciate this so, so much. We at the BBC Corporation look forward to seeing your future endeavours and can see you possibly becoming as famous in tomorrow's world as the likes of Alan Sugar or maybe the Oliver Twins. I'll take that any day. That is very, very sweet. Thank you, James. Toilet roll. BBC user guide. All these games! I've got a disc for it, I need a tape player. Ricochet. Ricochet. <laughs> the parting of the bubble wrap seas. So, you watched a TV series with me about a year ago called Micro Men. Mm -hmm. Remember that? James didn't see that. And that was about the race to get a computer into the British school system. So this was Martin Freeman's company, Acorn. That's right. BBC micro computer system marketed by the BBC, made by Acorn Electronics. Um, and in pretty much every school they had five, ten, maybe even a million of these. I've never seen underneath one. We didn't, we didn't really turn them over when I was 11. But look at all the expansion buses, user port, printer, disk drive, disk drive, which we now understand why we got that. Now I don't have the TV yet. They were made by Cub. C-U-B? Um, yeah, very distinctive metal boxes, this kind of, this color. Mm. Um, I now own the, the, probably the final computer that I need to reacquire from my childhood. It's very cool. So I would use this at school every day. And funny story, sitting next to me would be a certain Kate Beckinsale. Um, I shared a class with her for about seven years mm -hmm. or something, yeah. from five to 11 <laughs> years old. We'd be there coding little programs on the BBC Model B. And was now, she a good coder? I don't remember. I don't remember what, even what I would, would do. I just liked playing with the like random colors, random uh, graphics, and of course, in Dixon's typing in Dixon's is rubbish <laughs> making it scroll across the screen with flashing lights and uh, alarm sounds going off very mature <laughs> well I was 11 I think that's that's forgivable but there it is I think that is a lovely high note to that end on very cool um apologies to Dixon's but huge <laughs> huge thanks to James Langridge of course ah oh, welcome back how did you get here was that Doctor Who again Said, did you see that? She mm -hmm. said she prefers K9. Mm. I don't blame you. Well, from me, James, all the donors here, Lady Fractic, Puppy Fractic, Kate Beckinsale, <laughs> and Barkbox, and of course, who she be away? We just want to say a very huge thank you for all the donations. Thanks for watching. We'll be back before Christmas, probably next week, in fact. Until then, thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And cheerio. <laughs> Either way, if you're ever in England, give me a tinkle on the blower. Call me on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> the blower. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And we can have a good chin wag. A chat, talk. <laughs> I need a drink. Blah 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 blah.